In this segment for the Dutch Cottage Design Project, we're going to take a look at video number five, roof, stick, framing, and truss framing. If we go back into the program, this is a completed view of our framing view. And what I've done is I've done truss framing over the main portion of the house. If you watch the previous video, if we zoom in here a little bit, we did a custom vaulted ceiling in here and the trusses actually create and form a vault in this area automatically. And then we'll stick frame this portion of the house and actually I'm going to begin with a truss frame with it a gable end and then we'll go through and do the stick framing. Let's go through and take a look at these steps. I've opened up a version of the plan that actually has a gable on the front of the garage instead of the curved Dutch gable. In the build framing, let's take a look at just doing the stick framing first. Underneath the framing member menu for the roof, you can simply stick frame, let's go ahead and just select automatic build roof framing here. You can stick frame that roof and let's go ahead and turn that layer on so we can see what it just framed. You can stick frame the roof and it will automatically do it for you. If you're using, um, if you just want to stick frame it and uh, or not frame it, if you're using an outside truss company, you can do that as well. I'm going to remove the stick framing and I'm going to show you how to truss frame it should you need to do a section view for your permit drawings, even though you may be using an outside truss company. So let me undo this and let's get back to uh, a plan without the roof framing at all. I've turned off the stick framing as you can see in the 3D view. I'm going to select my roof truss tool and I'm just going to come over the top of this wall and click and drag a truss over the top of this wall. Notice that it's right on top of our wall framing. We'll correct that once we create a copy of these and correct it on the other side of the wall at the same time. Using the multiple copy tool, let's go ahead and open up that interval. The default is for roof trusses at 24 inches on center. Let's go ahead and create a copy of that and pull that across to the other side of the wall. I may have to come in here and let's zoom in and make sure that that came into the right location. Notice that this roof truss may be off slightly, so let's just make sure that we uh, bump that over so that it's exactly on the end of that wall. And now when I select the two end trusses, I'll just hold my shift key down here, I can mark those as an end truss and a reduced gable. The reduced gable is going to lower it. I think it's an inch and a half so it can build your lookouts. We'll force the truss rebuild and then to actually update the wall framing, Let's go up into the attic walls and we'll just grab those two attic walls and we'll force the rebuild of those. You can see that since there is a truss sitting directly over that wall, it forced the rebuild of those two walls to basically allow the truss to do that framing for you. Now if you select one of these trusses, there's an edit toolbar menu item in the lower section of your menu here. You can open up those truss items and this truss is um, an interesting shape. It's certainly possible to build that truss, but you may want to have that trim off and have your trusses on the garage right over the top of that. Let's take a look at the steps to do that. You'll find the truss base tool underneath your build roof menu and it's the fourth item down here. It works just about like a roof plane tool. Let's just drag in and create a snap at the point where we want this truss base and we'll select the points here and pull them back to the peak. We'll just do the same thing on the other side here. Once I have that selected and in position, there is a tool down here in your edit menu say that says make coplanar, move to be coplanar. Once you select that, you then select the roof plane to be coplanar and it will match in. Now let's, before I draw those other trusses, let's rebuild the trusses that are existing today. And let's just uh, shift F6 on our screen. And when I rebuild these trusses, these should then trim off in the 2D view here. Let's just use our truss tool and we'll just draw a marquee around all those trusses and you can open them up and force a rebuild. And you'll see that it trimmed those trusses off. Now if we zoom into the garage here, let's use our truss tool and let's just come in somewhere around this area here. I'm not going to do the end truss in that case. Use the multiple copy and we'll just pull that up. And I'm just going to pull it all the way into that area and you can see that those trusses now rode up the other trusses. After we've completed the trusses, you can now use the stick framing and it will fill in the spaces that the trusses did not complete. You may have to do some cleanup with that, but let's go ahead and build the roof framing here. Select OK and it will go ahead and put your fascia in there and you may not need some of your ridge boards. You can just simply come in here and remove those and make any adjustments. Remember on the reduced gable, this is where this lookout frames over the top of it and spans the trusses. You may need to do an additional stick frame back into here. You can either pull this back 
in this way or you could draw your own uh, general framing member and create that yourself so there would be a little bit of cleanup but for the most part it's going to give you a great way to do that I'm now going to shift gears and move back to the Dutch gable roof that has the curve and take a look at the framing process I've opened up the version of the house with the curved Dutch gable roof over the garage and we're going to go through the framing process of this. It's somewhat similar that we did earlier. We're going to truss frame over the main body of the house and then we'll stick frame over the garage. Let's go in and this is going to be a lot like the previous section where we selected our roof truss. We come over the top of our wall here, create our roof truss over the top of the wall, and then we'll use the multiple copy. It's set at 24 inches and we'll slide a copy series of those to the other end of the wall and then the two end trusses let's go ahead and select those mark those as end trusses with a reduced gable so we can frame the lookout we'll force the rebuild and now we have the trusses set over the main portion of the house remember we need to go back up into the attic wall um, we won't need this wall anymore let's toggle on our 3d view so you can see what we have I have a wall that was generated because we have our custom ceiling planes I'm just going to delete that wall and yeah and then we're going to take our two end walls select those and force the rebuild of the framing down here and now you can see that our end truss is correctly formed and then a little bit difficult to see but the custom ceiling that we had in here that had the 6 and 12 and flat ceiling is formed by the roof trusses now for this section of the roof we're just going to stick frame it there will be need to be some cleanup it's actually a fairly complicated roof let's go through and do the stick frame here under the build menu we'll just come into framing and choose the roof framing to stick frame it and we'll just come in and select that it actually does a pretty good job on this roof but we do need to do some cleanup in here let's just uh, maybe zoom in and I'm just going to delete some of these components out of here they're actually just not needed and then maybe go back into the 2D view. Let's go in and I'm just going to grab a couple of these framing members. Let's grab these two framing members because I have a gap between where the trusses come just above that. I'm going to select the copy tool and I'm going to slide a copy of those up until they snap into place. I've got that and again I may just uh, go back into the 3D view and see what else needs to be cleaned up. I'll just delete a couple more of these components in here that really just aren't needed. This one could be needed as the roof comes down but some of these that form up in here probably are not needed. Now one more thing is I wanted to build a gable over the entryway and um, I wanted to show you maybe it, when stick framing doesn't quite go as you might think it would go. So I'm just going to use my wall tool here and come in here and create a series of walls so that we can create our roof over the top of this. Let me turn on my temporary dimensions and I'm just going to set this out to be, let's just uh, make it four feet and we'll just pull this in a little bit approximately over the center of that door. So I've created an area for the porch Let's toggle this roof here to be a full gable wall. And then I want to raise the ceiling up maybe 12 inches. So I'm just going to come in here and say plus 12, raise that up. And now I'm going to build the roof. And when I build the roof, what I want to do is I want to retain the manually editing roof planes. Remember, I did quite a bit of work on that Dutch gable. And let's go ahead and rebuild that roof. And let's go back in and do some cleanup on this. Since the room inside of the house is shorter by at least a foot, then we have to go in and do some cleanup here. I'm just going to take and remove these roof planes in here. So have those roof planes cleaned up. Let's go back into the floor plan and I actually no longer need these walls so I'm just going to I want to determine where this roof plane actually intersects into the larger roof plane back into here obviously I could just pull this back and make the correction but I want to know exactly where it is so I'm going to highlight this roof let's let's just pull this back so we know exactly what we've got here roughly if you go into your preference settings under the architectural there is an automatically place roof intersection point on the roof. When you click on a roof plane and then you click on an, an edge, it will show you the intersection for that. So let's do that over here and then we'll click on this edge back here and you can see that I can just now snap that back into place. So again the process is which would be easy in this case just to pull this back and snap that into place select this edge and then we'll click on this edge over here and we'll just pull that back in and snap that into place. You can see exactly where that roof plane has come into play and now when you frame these two roof planes let's just uh, select these two roof planes and click the automatic frame those two objects. We'll not turn that on. 
and then we go back into the framing overview it actually didn't tie in very good so I'm gonna hit the undo button here and I'm gonna show you a little trick if you have a situation like that I've selected the two roof planes and I'm just gonna create a copy of those two roof planes and I'm gonna slide them over to the side of the house and as I do that let's just press the tab key and let's move them over exactly 360 inches as we'll use that to move the framing back with them selected let's build our framing for those components and let's turn that layer on and we've created the rafter framing for those and now I'm going to use my rafter tool and let's just uh, draw a marquee around all of those components we have got them all selected and as I slide these back over into place remember we move that 360 inches so I'm just going to type that back in move it back into place go back into the 3d and that framing is now updated so it's a little faster than cleaning up the framing that we did earlier on the curved roof and now we've created the framing for the design next up in the video series we'll take a look at what options we have for the stairs